All right, so we're back here, number 20. We got a um, non-rotating spherical planet. Now, it's interesting they mentioned that detail. I want to mention that too. This is kind of a side thought, but uh, I guess here is non-rotating spherical planet, right? Oh, uh, no, when I said this up and solved it, I wasn't thinking about the planet rotating, but that would actually be a technical detail that would matter, right? Do you guys know um, a good geographical reason why we're blasting off rockets down here in Florida versus, say, like North Dakota or Maine? Like, why down here in Florida? What's the advantage? Florida. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. At sea level. Uh, so, okay, maybe, maybe that part. What wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Greater linear velocity, and Ian, you're going to say probably the same thing? It's going to be closer to the equators. Yeah. Exactly. It goes hand in hand with being closer to the equator, right? So think about the Earth uh, rotating. Here could be like the Earth, the equator, North Pole, South Pole, and something like that, right? Uh, now, everywhere on Earth has the same angular velocity, one revolution every 24 hours, right? But depending on where you are, your latitude, you have different uh, linear velocities. Oh, I, th I think last semester I mentioned the mismatch between omega angular velocity and V linear velocity. Uh, so it's up the Coriolis effect if you're changing latitudes. Right? So it's up hurricanes, that sort of thing. Right? Yeah, the closer you are to the equator, you, you get a speed boost. The equator going about a thousand miles an hour compared to like the poles. Right? Yeah. So closer you get to the equator, you don't need as much rocket fuel to get it up to speed to like, get it into orbit. Yeah. So. Uh, that's a good reason. Oh, and uh, that's another reason too. Um, on the east coast, why why on the east coast of Florida instead of like the west coast, like Tampa, right? Because uh, if you blast off rocket kind of eastwardish, then that would align with the rotation of the Earth too, right? So if you blast it over the ocean, let's say there's some disaster, the rocket blows up, it'll land in the Atlantic Ocean rather than like in Orlando or something like that. Right? Uh, yeah. All right. So I'll have that there. Uh, okay, um, no atmosphere. So we're not worried about air drag, nothing like that. Just got rid of the atmosphere. So this planet has mass M and radius R. We're going to blast off a rocket with this speed right here. Now, interesting, they gave us the speed in terms of variables. Universal gravity constant, mass of the planet, radius of the planet. Right. That's okay. I'll show you guys that substitution. The potential energy of the uh, rocket planet system is given by U equals negative GMM on R. Uh, I think this is probably the least likely question that AP could ask you that would still technically be fair game, right? And it's this equation all the way at the bottom of the equation bank that you're allowed to use, right? So this is gravitational potential energy, but notice it doesn't say MGH. MGH is up here, right? right. Uh, so you want to use the negative GMM on R when you have a non-constant gravity field, right? That lowercase g is non-constant, right? If you're blasting a rocket into space, then that would be an application of this one, right? So you know, we got all these uh, side thoughts or reason, right? Uh, the greatest distance from the center of the planet, okay. ooh, uh, which is actually the easier way to solve this. So here's what I threw you guys as a hint the other day. Think about the setup. Okay. So here's the rocket at the surface of the planet. Uh, the rocket has mass little m. The planet has mass big M. The planet has fixed radius capital R. Okay. And this rocket hmm, it's going to go to some maximum distance from the planet. And I'll call that x measured to the center of the planet. Okay. okay so there's the setup. We're going to use conservation of energy to set this up. Right? Uh, you can also use conservation of energy to solve for escape speed, right? if you want to solve, solve for that similar type thought process. Right? So I need a point A and a point B, right? initial to final for this framework. Right? Uh, point A is at the surface of the planet. So we're blasting off this rocket, has this much kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Uh, and also this gravitational potential energy. Don't forget this bit, negative GMM on R, where R is the fixed radius of the planet, right? That's true also, right? And then when it gets to some maximum height, well, at that maximum height, it's run out of kinetic energy, but it has a lot more potential energy. Now, you still have to express that as a negative term. I'll call it negative GMM on X, and I'm solving for X. Right, you guys get that? Is that? All right, so here's the whole solution uh, pre-written out. Let's go over this step by step. All right, so there's the steps I just showed you guys. All right, we're solving for this X. How far out does it go? And they told you V naught in terms of G, M, and R. Uh, so I went ahead, it, it was a square root. I went ahead and squared that. So I just subbed in for V squared, subbed in that expression right there. Okay. So the square of a square root, cancel. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, now, uh, now what? Right. Well, on the left side, ooh, do you guys see a 4R in the denominator versus a 1R in the denominator? Hey, could you get a common denominator of like 4R? Can I multiply this one top and bottom by 4? Right, times four over four, right? Remember, if you multiply by four over four, 
you're technically multiplying by one, so you're not actually changing the premise of the question, right? You're just getting a common denominator, right? right. Okay, so we got that, right? So, uh, ooh, uh, put that all together, got GMM minus four GMM, that's like negative three GMM, right? And then common denominator there, right? right. And then on the right side, you're solving for this X, right? Ooh, do you guys see left and right, the GMM's gotta cancel out anyway? Right, ah, right. right so, right. And then, uh, okay, because I want a common denominator. Right? I have something over 4R and something over just plain R. Right? I want to combine these two fractions. So they need a common denominator, which is going to be 4R. So I need to multiply by 4 over 4 so I can get that common denominator. Right? So now I can just add those two fractions together. Right? Right? And that gives me GMM minus 4 times GMM, which is negative 3 GMM. And so then uh, the GMM itself cancels. Uh, you swap this around, solve for x, do a cross multiplication, uh, four thirds times r. Uh, that was the answer that they were looking for. So that was one of the answer choices, and that was the correct answer. Right? Right. You guys, go back. Got that in your notes. Your notes. All right. All right. So you guys ready for the FRQ? FRQ. FRQ time.